What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to this channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 BMW M4 Coupe, courtesy of Sioka BMW in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we are in this one because Isle of Man Green Metallic, that's the first reason. This color is absolutely stunning. Two, you got a turbocharged inline six cylinder and and this thing is just an absolute legend, quite honestly. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the M4 Coupe will start at $79,100. Price as tested comes in at right around $86,350. But Powering the Beast is a three liter twin turbocharged inline six cylinder, putting out 473 horsepower at right around 2,600 RPM, 406 pound feet of torque coming in at right around 6,200 RPM. That power being sent to the rear wheels through a six speed manual, zero to 60 time according to car and driver, 3.8 seconds. That's Plenty respectable there. Top speed 180 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city, 23 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. So, next, I did want to mention to you guys, of course, the drive modes. So, there are some buttons located just to the left of the shifter there. Drive modes will include sport, sport plus, and M mode. And by the way, the M mode, there are some red kind of buttons located on the steering wheel here. That's what they are for. But just think things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, the braking feel, and actually the exhaust sound as well so quite a bit of adjustments there so anyways now that I got all of that out of the way typically in this part I do an acceleration test however there is a break-in period for the M4 coupe so I'm not really going to be doing an acceleration test in this video but rather I'm just gonna shift through the gears I want to kind of get a feel for how this manual is and uh, I'll give you a couple comments on that here all right here we go here let's just test out the shifting a little bit I'm not gonna get too high in the rpms here that's fine That's fine. Yeah, it's it's not the smoothest shifter. It's not like Honda shifter or a Volkswagen Golf GTI or something like that, but it's not bad, actually. I don't mind it. Um, it's a little bit notchy, but it's not bad. It's one of those things with any manual transmission, you get used to it, and I don't know. I kind of like it. I'm just really happy to be in a manual car again because it's been so long. There's so few of them these days. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's perfectly fine. So again, no acceleration test because of the braking period, but to go along with that kind of shifting, I do want to mention the braking is equally important. So up front, you will find perforated front disc with six piston front calipers in the back perforated rear disc. As far as the caliper colors go, you have several different options. Actually, you have blue, there is red and black as well. And then there's M carbon ceramic brakes available for $8,500. And as far as the braking feel goes, since there's no one behind us, it's immediate. That is insane. This thing immediately comes to a stop as expected. The braking on a car like the M4 should be like that. So definitely on the firm side of things. I'm a big fan of that. But anywho, the touching on suspension and handling, of course, an independent multi-link front and rear suspension does come standard, but you also get an adaptive damping suspension that comes standard as well. So that's going to monitor the shock absorbers individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it's also going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you better handling and giving you the best of both worlds so that's definitely something i absolutely love especially in performance cars like the m4 coupe and having said that though if it didn't have that this thing would probably be a pretty stiff ride because even with that adaptive damping suspension you do tend to feel a pretty decent amount of the road just because of the way the suspension is tuned but honestly if you're getting the m4 coupe it probably shouldn't bother you anyway so i'll just put it that way but as far as steering feel goes that has been great definitely on the heavier side of things so i have no issues with the steering feel and the cool part of it is is because this is an m car the 10 and 2 grips on the steering wheel are absolutely mammoth so it gives the driver a better feeling of being in control at least that's my case so i'm definitely a big fan of the steering wheel grips and i also like the uh the red line on the upper portion of the steering wheel
wheel too. That's pretty cool in case you take this thing to the track. So big fan of that. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going 25 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. And touching our rear visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. A lot of coupes, that is not the case. Some coupes uh, like the Z and like the Camaro, it's horrible visibility. But with the M4 coupe, you actually can see really, really good. So no issues there. And touching on forward visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on this one. So whenever the M4 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So just one less thing you got to worry about there, kind of like automatic headlights. And there is a head up display available with the executive package that goes for $1,200, a package that we do indeed have here today. And that's pretty cool. So it gives you the speed, speed limit, and it's kind of like a blue hue in the background too. So pretty darn cool looking. I don't mind it, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 BMW M4 Coupe. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2025 BMW M4 Coupe finished in Isle of Man green metallic, which by the way is a $650 paint option if you are interested. But it looks absolutely amazing. I'm not sure I would get this car in any other color than that Isle of Man green metallic. This thing looks so dang good. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the M4 is made. Take a good look at the VIN. First character is the letter W, indicating that this one is built and assembled in Germany as it should be. But starting up front, very muscular design. I love the creases on the hood, kind of matching up with that front grille. That looks so dang good. But wide open front grille with the M4 logo. You guys can see that, of course course got front air curtains to the bottom corners there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature with those of course along with automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so definitely a feature my wife personally loves and just look at kind of the the fenders and how they bulge out on the side and like the headlights not even all the way out to the side this looks so dang good it's such a wide stance from the front and this color is just simply perfection but that's just my opinion let me know what you guys think of the color in the comment section below but that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the m4 gloss black window surrounds of course do come standard taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turn signals of course as well got those front fender vents with the m4 lettering that definitely looks good then taking a look down at the wheel setup there are so so many different wheel designs and configurations available you're probably going to have to spec this one out online if you want to check that out but uh, they're all staggered fitments by the way so like 18 inches up front 19 inches in the back kind of ordeal or 19 inches up front 20 inches in the back so not only are they a different width but they are different in size as well which is kind of interesting you don't see that too often but of course on the m4 but i do like the gloss black side skirts that kind of continues on in the front and the back as well that ties together with the front fender accents to go along with all of it so definitely an insanely good looking side profile but let's not go ahead and swing around to the back all right and so now since we are around to the back of the m4 this exhaust note just rumbling here just sounds absolutely amazing we'll do that exhaust clip in a second here but body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top it's kind of a shark fin antenna i guess you can call it that but rear spoiler it's going to be either finished in body colored or gloss black depending upon the configuration that you go with of course got that m4 badging just above the passenger side tail light and of course led tail lights with a very cool design actually let's get up a little bit closer and take a look at that it says bmw laser so laser light technology and it's kind of like an infinity kind of thing infinity look to the sides there so definitely a very cool look there gloss black rear diffuser as i was saying the gloss black continues on to the back there and then to the sides kind of dual exhaust outlets with quad chrome tips looks so dang aggressive so Having said that, I'm gonna go kind of easy on it, but I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All 
right, so now since we are around to the back of the M4, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it is a power trunk. There is a button on the key fob and there is a button on the trunk itself, of course, as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down. There's actually some levers found in that cargo area to fold down those rear seats. So that was super convenient, but there's actually a grocery bag hook back there. I was kind of surprised to see that, but overall it's a decent amount of space for a two plus two seater. So no issues there for me. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 34.7 inches, which is actually kind of impressive for a two plus two. So I'll give this a shot for you. For reference, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back seats there. But there is rear ventilation back there. That's a big bonus for me. I love seeing that. However, there are no cup holders and there's no charging ports or anything like that because you probably wouldn't expect that anyways, because this is a two plus two coupe. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, Marie you know, leather does, does come standard if I could talk. Got some nice color options actually as well. You got like marina blue. That's probably what I would do. Kailami orange. I probably butchered that. There's Fioni red and Fjord blue. So quite a bit of really cool interior color options for the M4. I will say that. You got the backlit M4 logo to the upper portion of those seats as well. That lights up. That's pretty darn cool. They are power adjustable. They are heated. Ventilated front seats go for $500. We need those today. It's going to be like in the hundreds and it's 91 right now right now. M carbon bucket seats go for $4,500. So that's available if you wanted it. I like the M colors on the seat belt. I don't want to forget to mention that. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. I certainly didn't have any issues. But now let's get to one of my favorite parts. That's the steering wheel for several different reasons. It is tilt and telescoping. It is a new design for 2025. So that's pretty cool. Got the M logo on the bottom. But you also notice on the bottom, it's carbon fiber. Like you have carbon fiber steering wheel that continues surrounding this thing as well so it's authentic carbon fiber it's not just the fake stuff it's the real thing there's a flat bottom to the very bottom as well and you got the m colors you got the red line up top and you got these massive 10 and 2 grips so and by the way it is leather wrapped that's the standard configuration there's an alcantara finish if you wanted that that goes for 500 dollars. but overall one of the best steering wheels out there for sure i absolutely love it but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your m colors on the side of the key of course but on the one side, it's all of your buttons, basically. Lock, unlock that button to pop the rear trunk there. The lock button's going to be the BMW logo, but it is all keyless entry with the push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the braking clutch and press that red engine start button, just like the S2K back in the day. I love it. Located just to the left of the shifter. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. It looks pretty dang good. I will say that. And by the way, when you adjust the drive modes, the gauge setup will completely change change the look up there as well so that's pretty cool but you could display things of course like the gear there's tachometer speedometer how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's speed limit recognition and of course the uh temperature outside which is saying that it's stinking hot today so gauges look perfectly fine it is a curved display that we have with us here today so that's pretty cool too but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here we do have a power moonroof so i liked seeing that because that gave me an extra angle for the driving portion of this review that's the reason why I like that. So that's pretty cool up there. Got an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls throughout the three different garage doors. And uh, it is a frameless rear view mirror as well. So that's pretty cool. Automatic climate control or dual zoom climate control, I should say. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. There's a Sensatec dashboard that goes for $350. If you wanted to go that route, that's available as an option. There is, of course, ambient lighting as well. I went ahead and just jacked up the brightness there and uh, put it on emerald to match our exterior color, of course. So it's going to be hard to see in the daytime here, guys, because I'm not going to be able to show that to you guys, really. But just know it's available and it's going to look stinking cool at night. Just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage. You got a couple cup holders, 12 volt power outlet um, surrounding the shifter. To my surprise, well, you do have the carbon fiber. I love that. That looks really darn good. But surrounding the shifter is a matte black plastic finish. What's going on, BMW? Come on, finish that in a gloss black or something or make it all carbon fiber. Just anything but this matte black plastic finish. I kind of expected more, honestly, with that. That's one of my pet peeves, but just behind the shifter, you do have a decent amount of storage for what this vehicle is and a USB charging port in there. There's also a little uh, LED light in there as well. And you got your wireless phone charger in there. I almost forgot to mention that. That's stinking cool too. So I do like that. So 
Overall, interior quality was pretty darn good. If I could make it better, I would put an Alcantara headliner probably, and um, just the matte black finishes surrounding the shifter. I think those two things would definitely uh, make it even better. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. 14.9 inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Um, by the way, it is touchscreen, like I said, but there is a circular dial and buttons located just behind the shifter. That's a second way to go ahead and adjust that if you're maybe driving and that's easier for you. Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. Android Auto Apple CarPlay, you got a factory navigation system that comes standard as well. Uh, ambient lighting settings you can adjust up there. Climate control information you can adjust up there. The heated steering wheel button you can adjust up there. It, basically, there's so much different stuff you can adjust up there. The driving modes, for example, as well, um, as well as your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, I'll give you guys that now. It is a 16-speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So that's what comes standard and that's what we have today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. I love it. That is dang good. So plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. And if you think about it, 16 speakers in a size of a vehicle in a coupe, uh, the size of the M4, that is 100% overkill, which is a wonderful thing. The only thing I would change with this is BMW. I know you could do it gesture control you put gesture control on like suvs you really need gesture control on cars with a manual transmission because it's so easy to turn up and down the radio with just a clockwise and counterclockwise motion so that's what i would add to that but incredible sound system on this thing but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the m4 in reverse which by the way is straight to the left and then straight up that will give you a rear view camera which by the way is insanely high definition well done bmw for that um also surround view monitor there to the right letting you know what is completely all around you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start this one is not yet rated by iihs and it might not be rated by iihs because of the car that it is so i usually start by mentioning that but front side side current airbags do come standard got a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children there's the tire pressure monitoring system of course but also coming standard forward collision mitigation front pedestrian detection a blind spot monitoring system with cross traffic alert lane departure warning lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here the fact that a manual transmission still comes standard on the m4 is a beautiful thing now i will say it's not my favorite manual transmission out there i think that might go to maybe the integra type s uh that I recently drove maybe uh i don't know six months ago or something like that but even the golf gti is amazing civic si is great um, I don't know, it's just a little bit notchy. It kind of reminds me of like a Subaru WRX STI, uh, for example. That's what I would compare this manual transmission to. Uh, it's something that you get used to. I will say e even with driving an STI, I got used to it eventually. Um, but it is a little bit notchier than some of the other manuals out there. I'm just saying that. Excellent driving dynamics though. Definitely a very heavy steering feel. Excellent braking in this thing. Like I said, I couldn't test out the acceleration because uh, braking period and all that fun stuff. But I would imagine if I could, it would be quite fun fun uh, very iconic design as well this thing is definitely going to grab your attention if not from the design then the color so isle of man green metallic is amazing also brilliant exhaust note i hope you guys enjoyed that i didn't give it too much but i wanted you to hear that um, nonetheless as far as room for improvement goes i got two things it's somewhat of a rough ride but that's kind of to be expected in a vehicle like this even with the adaptive damping suspension because of the way the suspension is tuned you still do tend to feel a little bit more of the road and the interior quality there's two big things i would change one major thing you got to get rid of this matte black plastic surrounding the shifter i would make that gloss black or something like that but the other thing is maybe an alcantara headliner suede headliner whatever you want to call it that would be a nice little added touch as well but anyways let me know what you guys think of the m4 coupe in the comments section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.